YouTube. Hope everyone had a restful evening. I hope the kids didn't come back too hyped up on all that candy they got last night. I know mine did. But I'm happy for today because today we finally get to do what I've always wanted to do with this channel, which is to sit down and go through God's Word book by book chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and allow God to open our eyes to what he would have us to see. Now, if God lays something on my heart or something you know comes to mind and I feel like sharing it with you, you know, I've, I've said this until I'm blue in the face. Don't take my word for it. Take it for what it's worth. Because, see, we're all unique. We're all individuals. And even though we're all walking uh, this same walk together, uh, we are at different levels or stages in our walk with God. And we have different needs. You know, our circumstances and situations that we're going through uh, are different. So when God speaks to us through his word, you know, what I may need and what you may need is two totally different things. So he's going to deal with me differently than he's going to deal with you. Well... If you see one thing and I see something else, how do I know what's right? Number one, God is right, and that's all that matters. Number two, is what you're perceiving to pull out of these scriptures, what you believe they are saying to you, does scripture back up what, what you're thinking and believing? If it does, you're good to go. If it don't, then you may want to take and reread a few times. You may want to pray about it. You may want to ask God to open your eyes and to give you a vision for what you're reading so that you may understand and you may know what it is that he's trying to say to you. The Bible says that if any lack wisdom, to pray and ask for wisdom and God will give it to you. I think it's very important before you read your Bibles that you, you, you pray and ask God to open your eyes and allow you to see. So that's one of the things that we're going to do before we start reading and getting into the scripture. Secondly, we're going to be going from the book of John, chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Now, I'm going to try to put as much in to these Bible studies as I can in regards to, to the the content it may be God really lays a lot of stuff on my heart secondly I once again um, I, I've said this until I'm blue in the face originally this was just going to be me videotaping a record of my experiences my thoughts my understanding about God and his word for my grandchildren. So they may be a lot of basic things that we talk about or 
I talk about, and you say, Reggie, man, I know all that. I mean, who doesn't? That's just common sense. My grandbabies are seven and eight, okay? They don't understand why you can't go out here with a dollar and buy a new house, a new car, and go out to McDonald's every day for every meal for the rest of your life. You know, they don't even understand the concept of money, let alone the concept of the Word of God. So anything I talk about, anything I explain, I'm going to explain it in such a way that they would understand it at their age now. They may not watch this until they're 20, 25 years old. Who knows? But I'm not going to take any chances. And they say, well, Papa's talking about stuff I don't understand. I have to wait till I get older so I understand. No, they may need that word right then and there. So, you know, just bear with me. Just bear with me. I don't want anybody to think, well, he just thinks we're idiots. No, no, I don't. I want to make sure that they have a, a good, solid grasp, a foundation in which to build upon. And that foundation is Jesus. But we're going to go as far as we can. And if we don't make it to the end of the first chapter, which I highly doubt we will, we will pick up where we left off on the next video. I'm happy you are here. Um, I thank God for each and every one of you. And I hope that the Lord will show us his will and his desire for our lives through his word and and lead us and guide us into all understanding so that we may know him and we may know his heart and we may know his desires because that's what it's all about is getting to know him more of him having more of his ways in us okay well I'm going to pause this for a quick second and then when I come back we're going to we're going to pray over the reading of God's Word, and we're going to jump in this thing and see what God has for us this morning, okay? Sorry about that. I had to get me something to drink. My mouth gets a little dry. I guess it's because it's always open. I talk too much. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Ask Him to bless. Excuse me, bless the reading of His Word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity you've given me to be able to reach out and try to share with others the love I have for you in my heart and the love you have for us in your heart. Lord, I thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe. And as we read your word this morning, Lord, I ask that you open our eyes, give us a fresh revelation, a fresh new vision of who you are and what you would have us to see. Lord, in our own minds, we can't comprehend the things of God unless you open our eyes to where we can see, then we shall remain blind. We shall remain in a state of ignorance. Lord, we're here today because when it comes to you and it comes to your word, we want to have that knowledge so that we can take it and not just apply it to our lives, but to apply it to 
other people's lives that we meet out here on the job, in the restaurant, in the grocery store, so that we can be that vessel that you can pour yourself into and put out here in this world and use as your hands and feet and your mouthpiece to further your kingdom. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Not for what you do and not just for what we have, but just because of who you are. Lord, I love you and I praise you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. I assume everyone has a cup of coffee. Let's kick back and relax and let's start reading and see what God's going to do for us this morning, okay? John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay. Remember how I said I'm going to explain things as if I was talking to my small grandchildren? There's a lot of people in this world, for whatever reason, I mean, that's, that's, that's them, it's what they believe, but they don't believe in the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, okay? I've heard people who say that you know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I mean, we all know that. Very beginning in Genesis. Okay? But, when you relate to someone, well, you know, uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit was there. No, they wasn't. It was just God. Jesus wasn't there. Mary, Mary hadn't given birth to him yet. Dumbest thing I've ever heard. That is somebody, and it's something that should have been on my last video that really ticks me off, is people who don't know the Bible but try to talk to you about the Bible. That's what these people are. They're ignorant, they're confused, and they're lost. This scripture right here proves it. Now watch this. In the beginning was the Word, one. That's God. And the Word was with God, two. That's the Son. And the Word was God, three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three and one, the Trinity. The same Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the same was in the beginning with God. In other words, God was not alone. You can twist it and turn it any way you want to. You can't get past these verses. If if somebody's if this is your first time ever watching one of my videos, um, I'm reading from the King James Bible. Uh, for me, it's always been King James. I always will be. Uh, you use what you feel is right for you. Um, some of the wording may not uh, will not be the same. But it should have the same content. Verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay? Now, that's a very simple verse. Very simple. Okay? 
as the old saying goes, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. But yet, this goes out through scientists. Or I, I think now, a lot of them uh, have, 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 have got to... Uh, got a new name I think it's called uh, creatist uh, you know they believe that this atom this molecule this this uh, roach bug and this butterfly all came together and impacted and poof the world came into existence what did the verse just say all things were made by him who's him God and without him, God, was not anything made that was made, okay? Nothing in the past that was made. Nothing that we have here in the present that was made. Things that, that will be made or will come about in the future will not be made without God. So you think, I mean, I don't know. People who believe that, I guess our resurrections uh, are different. You know, uh, you know, the term we use, uh, the rapture of the church, when the rapture happens, for believers, for children of God, we say, you know, well, the Bible says that when this happens, all the dead in Christ shall rise and meet him in the air. I guess for these who think that us was made from all these different particles and stuff and and we came from monkeys and everything else, I guess they think that we just going to be laying in the ground, dead as the doornail, and a spaceship going to come by and beam us up, Scotty. I don't know. Uh, I haven't ever seen a flying saucer. I don't believe in that stuff. Uh, kind of nice to watch some of the science fiction stuff they put on TV. Uh, it's entertaining, but uh, I don't hold it as being anything accurate or true. Verse 4. This one's very tricky. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, in him. Who's him? Once again, it's talking about God here. Was life. What did Jesus say? When... He went and he raised Lazarus from the dead. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus told the disciples that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no man coming to the Father except by him. Okay? In him was life. This is talking about the sun. And the life was the light of men. Okay. Was the life of men. It was what actually gave them life. How, how did you get your life? Oh, I know you just floating around out of space somewhere. And one day mama met daddy and poof, there you were. Listen. I'm talking about your spiritual life. Your life eternal in heaven with Jesus. Who gave you that? When, G when God sent his son and he was nailed on the cross, he bore you. When he said, it is finished. You were just in a sense, because of 
his love and because of what he did, when you accept Jesus at that moment, you're, you're birthed into life, a new life, a better life. Some people, I, I don't know if he's talking about that. I think he's talking about when he created the world and, you know, he said, let there be light. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll show you some more scripture that backs up what I'm saying here. There was a man, I'm reading in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, I think the way it's worded, um, Jesus was sent from God. Uh, John was sent by God. There's a difference. Uh, it's, it's either a typo or it was translated wrong. Um, there is a difference between the two. In order to be sent from God, you had to be there with God. Jesus was there with God, so he was sent from God. John was sent by God. See how just one word makes a world of difference? That's why you have to be careful when you read your Bible. Sometimes, I mean, I know people's not perfect. I'm definitely not perfect. But sometimes people mess up and make mistakes. And so you have to watch for things like that. I'm not saying the Bible is a mistake or full of mistakes. I'm just saying that even if it says from God, it should have been translated by God. Okay? The same came for a witness. This John we're talking about, not John the Revelator, we're talking about John the Baptist, okay? John the Baptist, the same, came for a witness to testify of Jesus, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That all men through him might believe? Who's him? Jesus. Technically, we're still in Old Testament days here. Okay? There's people who, uh, under the law, they're still stumbling and falling and failing every day just like we do under grace. But grace had not yet come. Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. They were still under the law, but there were people who were dying that, that, that were going uh, into paradise, as, as, as Christ himself put it. So they were people who did believe, but now they want them to believe on Jesus. Believe in me and believe in him who sent me, the Bible says. Believe in both because the two are the same, two in one. The Trinity, three, but right now we're just focusing on the two, God the Father and God the Son. He, he's talking about John, was not that light. But he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Okay. He is the light of the world. When we get saved, he says that we become children of light. Of, of light. Okay? That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 
this is how we know it's talking about the Lord here. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He was part of the Trinity, part of the three in one, part of, of what created all things. With, along with the Father and with the Holy Spirit in heaven together collectively uh, unified unity uh, as one created everything everything that was created was created by him and everything that was created was uh how how to say that? All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse eleven He came unto his own, and his own received him not. That is speaking unto the people were they didn't receive him. Uh, like they should have. They didn't live their lives as he commanded them to. Uh, you remember the Bible says that God would walk in the cool of the day. and uh, He would meet uh, Adam in a certain place and they'd walk through the garden together. Well, it wasn't a physical presence. It was like the voice of God. Um, God did miracles. God also uh, put a put a whooping on some people too. Uh, but there were people as God the Father, uh, who who He came into His own. The people, the 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 the. Uh, Israelites, the Jews, they did not accept him. You know, they 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 worship all these false gods uh, instead of worshiping him as the, the the one true God, the true light, as the scripture just said that we just read. And so now he has sent the second part of the Trinity which is Jesus, God in flesh. But as many as perceive, as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Salvation. Now, I'm sure it was probably a lot harder back then to get saved and stay saved than it is today. Anything you do under the law, uh, it's going to be twice as hard because you're going about it using a a means that doesn't work. Thank God he sent his son Jesus. which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Letting them know he's not of this world. This is the Messiah I'm, I'm telling you about. This is the one that we've been waiting for. Y'all got moms, y'all got dads, brothers, sisters. Um, he didn't have any. And, you know, your mom and dad, the, the, the will and the desires of the flesh or the will of a man or a woman, you know, what they wanted to do. Uh, he is not like this. He's different. He's special. He stands out. He is the Messiah. He's... He's trying to prepare the way for them. 
And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, just what I said. Everything I tell you, Scripture backs up what I say. I've been saying this whole time. It's talking about Jesus. Right there. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the Lord, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Um, the law will mess you up. The law will drag you down. The law will keep you bound in shackles and chains. It's grace and truth that sets you free. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So, letting you know, he always was. And of his fullness, his glory, have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Okay? That's true. No man at any time has seen God. But there was... One time when Moses desired to see God. And as the story goes, he he hid in a cliff of a rock. And when the Lord passed by, he could turn his head. Now, did he see the back of his head? Or did he just see the, the light and the countenance of his glory? Or was it just like, you know, from his back down to his sandals or... You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. But in regards to the face of God, no man at any time has ever seen that. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests. Uh-oh. He ain't he ain't he ain't even stood up and said, Hey, how y'all doing yet? The church is already starting trouble. <coughs> and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And so when they did, he answered and he said, uh and he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Okay. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Okay. In other words, he's saying, you guys don't know who I am. You guys really don't need to know who I am. But I will tell you this, I am not the Messiah. I am not the one that, we're waiting for. And they asked him, What then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Okay, so he's not Christ and he's not Elias. Elias was a prophet. Okay. Art thou that prophet? Okay, your honor... Uh, move to strike. That question was asked and answered already. Art thou a lie, Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet, Elias? Don't matter how you word it, the answer's the same. 
He told you no. Why would you even bother asking? That's stupid. Why is he going to ask him that same question twice? It don't matter how you word it, the answer's still the same. No, 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 no wonder the Ten Commandments were as simple as they were because God wrote simple commandments for simple people. But John answered and said, No, I'm not that prophet. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Boy, are you using sheep for a pillow? You got cotton in your ears? What sayest thou of thyself? Have you not been listening? So he says, okay, <sighs> let's try this one more time. Verse 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then? In other words, what right do you think you have? Under whose power and whose authority? Who told you you could do that? Did you check with the church first? Did you get permission from the church? <sighs> Folks, I tell you, if you really sit down and read your Bible... It almost makes the word church a bad word. You know why I can't stand the thought of a negative impacting church. If you got yourself a good church, God bless you and God bless that church. But as far as I can drive, I have searched and searched, and I, I can't find one I can sit in longer than 15 minutes max. I've done found enough stuff I could preach till the day I die on, and they ain't even made their first points yet. They still going through the introduction. If thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet, why baptize thou then? That's what they ended with. What they truly meant was, as I said before, who, under whose power and authority did the church give you permission? Because the church was fairly in control of Everything in regards to the religious culture, their beliefs. John answered them, verse 26, saying, I baptize thee, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, among you, okay, now, when I hear that word among, it's like somebody's there, they're close by. Uh, I can't say with 100% certainty that, that God was, was just kind of standing back a little bit in the distance, uh, how close he was, but he, he wasn't far off. I believe John felt him. That may sound crazy to some folks, but what happened? When, before Jesus was born, the Bible says that Mary went to visit Elizabeth, okay? Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, remember? And when they got within a certain 
distance. It may have been right close in hugging distance. I, I don't know. Once again, I wasn't there. But when they got to a certain distance, John, from inside Elizabeth's womb, leaped, the Bible said. Because he was there in the presence of the Savior. He, he knew he was the Savior. He felt it. And he was acknowledging his existence. And Jesus is still in, in, in Mary's uh, belly. So don't tell me, you know, that that's kind of a far-fetched idea. I don't think he could feel him. That really doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, I'm just going off what God's Word says. And it said that when John was in the belly, he leaped. Well, he wasn't born yet, so he couldn't see, he couldn't walk, couldn't talk. Couldn't ask him, hey, what's your name? Who are you? But he leaped because he felt his presence. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we rejoice. Sometimes we get happy and dance and run up and down the aisles. Why? Because we feel God's presence there. I know a lot of you are like, well, you know, I have heard tell of, of, of some people doing that. Yeah, back when church was church, back when people actually loved the Lord uh, more than they did the sin in their life. It don't happen in a lot of churches anymore. Everybody goes in and sits down. And once the, the preacher starts his sermon, uh, they're sitting there counting the seconds until they get out of there. Go eat that dinner at Cracker Barrel or, or wherever you know you may go to eat. Thinking about, we get out of here early enough, we might be able to make it to the beach today. We got to mind on everything except Jesus coming to the house of God and don't even acknowledge his, him, let alone his presence. That's what church folks do. Verse 27. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose the Messiah, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the great physician. You know, uh, I'm just his humble servant, you know, just to be standing on the same planet as him brings me such great honor. Uh, I'm not even worthy to even look into his eyes, let alone uh, loosen the straps of his sh of his sandals. Sounds like humility to me. This world needs to get a lot more of it. These things were done in Beth Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Y'all know how the Bible is. We're going to run across a lot of words. Usually, I come across a hard word like that. If I can't pronounce it or can't figure out how to say it, I'll say that place, that hard word, uh, and move on. Um, so if I miss speak or pronounce some of these places or names. I hope it doesn't offend anybody. I apologize. I do the best I can. But I hope that God has spoke something to your heart today. Uh, I chose John because I spent so much time in John when I first got saved. and I know A lot about John. I have preached 
more out of John than any other book in the Bible. Um, and to open it up uh, as a place to start, uh, this was a very uh, generic, a very, I guess you say, basic beginning. So, because you know, somebody, you know, maybe a teenager, maybe a young adult, maybe they got saved a couple of weeks ago or something, and they're looking for some way to help understand the Bible better. To start here in the book of John is an excellent place to start. And if they come and they sit and listen, if I'm going to explain it to you like I would to my grandbabies, uh, which in essence, that is literally what I'm doing, explaining it to them. Um, it's going to help bring so much clarity to their life. It's great if you already know this stuff and what I'm telling you is nothing new. That's great and that's wonderful. Maybe you didn't get anything out of the reading today. Go back and reread it again. Just reread these verses and we will uh, pick up what we left off uh, on the next posting. We start on verse uh, 28. We'll pick up in 29 and finish out the first chapter uh, in, our, in my next posting. And as we get in, uh, it will tend to draw back some because, like I said, I've done a lot of preaching out of John. Um, there's that the, the deeper we get into John, the the more I have to say, the more in depth I go. Um, Things that, I mean, it's going to take a lot of explanation. So we're going, we're going, it's going to like put the brakes on it, so to speak, and it's going to slow down some. But if you can get through John and have a generalized, basic understanding of John, you're off to a great start. Uh, and when I get into the, uh, a lot of these verses and scriptures that I preached on, uh, I believe that maybe I'll be able to show you some things you've never seen. And maybe you can take it and apply it to some of the th things that you see. And maybe it just it, it strengthens it. And maybe you take a little bit of what God says and what I say and what you think and put it all together and and I mean it's just it's amazing God works that way folks I hope you had a wonderful time I know I enjoyed myself I hope you have a, a wonderful day and a safe day and until next time may God be with you and God bless you